Okay, so I continue in my uh, example, the matching pennies. Uh, remember these were the, in the previous video, uh, please watch the previous video first to find, uh, sort of, to figure out how we get those expected payoffs. So this is the expected payoff of player one. If he chooses left, and given that his opponent player two is playing left with Q probability, and this is the expected payoff of player one if he chooses right, and these are the expected payoffs of player two if he chooses left or right, given that his opponent player one is playing left with P probability. All right, so again, here the P, these two guys are playing this game simultaneously, meaning they choose some P number, and player two chooses some Q number. P is some number, something, anything between zero and one, and, and Q is anything between zero and one, and then the game is over, those uh, choices are revealed, and the moderator says, oh, player one has chosen P, equals something, Q equals, the player two has chosen Q equals something. The question is, is there anyone who regrets his or her choice? So we're looking for regret-free outcome, and hence the Nash equilibrium, all right? So that's the idea. So what we do in this step is we calculated the expected payoffs. So given that for player one, so let's do it for player one first. So given that player two is playing Given that player two wrote Q, whatever that Q is, we don't know that yet. What are the outcomes that are not going to cause me regret? So what P values, right? What P values given Q, all right, uh, will be regret free? All right. Um, more formally, best response. And then for player two, we're going to do the symmetric version. Given the Q values, uh, what P will be, uh, what, I'm sorry, given the P values, what Q will be regret-free. All right. So how do we solve that? Well, simple. We look at the, because we are talking about the first player's best response, uh, we look at these two uh, payoffs. So the 2q minus 1 is sometimes greater than 1 minus 2q. Sometimes the opposite is true. Oops, the opposite is means this is true. And there's a third condition or scenario where they actually may be equal, right? So there's three scenarios basically, one, two, three. In the first scenario, the 2q minus 1 greater than 1 minus 2q. What does that mean? That means, as a player 1, if you happen to play left, all right, for those values of q, playing left is going to bring you higher payoff than playing right, all right? So you should actually play left then. So because left is a better payoff achieving thing. So if you play right, you're going to regret. So you should play left for sure, all right? So you should choose left with probability one, meaning P must be one, all right? So if this is the case, P must be one. Clear? Again, if this is the case means the expected payoff of playing left is higher than expected payoff of playing right. I mean, left is gonna give you, bring you higher payoff than right in expectation. So you shouldn't play right. If you do, you're going to regret because you're choosing an action which brings you lower payoff. So you're not going to regret only if you choose left. Well, the question is, should I choose that left with probability 1 or probability 90%, 80%? Well, I mean, left is bringing you the highest payoff. It's like, why are you not... I mean, think it this way. So this is... This is, this is, I don't know, uh, a gamble. So the left is basically, so uh, there are two arms of the slot machine and the left is gonna bring you more money and you know that than right. So then why, why do you choose both left and right uh, arms uh, with some positive probabilities? You know, put all your money, you put your, all your chips on the left arm because that's the uh, most profitable arm. You see what I mean? So for that reason, P 
P is the probability that you're going to play left, remember? So you should be choosing P equals 1. That's the regret-free outcome. Or the, so P equals 1 is optimal. Best response. All right. Or regret-free. I don't know. Regret-free strategy. Okay. I mean, if you happen to see Q satisfying this, and you play something P different than one, you're going to say, oh, shoot, I wish I would have played P equals one. All right. So if this is the case, so one minus two Q is greater than this. It means the expected payoff of playing right is higher than playing left. So you should basically put all your chips on the right uh, arm. So you should play right with probability one. Remember, one minus P is the probability of playing right. So you want that probability to be 1, that means P must be 0. P equals 0 is optimal, best response or regret-free, all right? And then finally here, if this is the case, if Q is such that you're indifferent between left and right, so you whether, so both left and right arm gives you ex exactly the same payoff, so you're indifferent between them, so whether you put all your chips on left or all chips on right or 50-50 or 80-20 doesn't matter because they both give you the same expected payoff. And hence, any P in between 0 and 1 is optimal. Okay? So then the question is, what are the values of Q that satisfy this inequality or this inequality or this inequality? Well, we already solved this in the previous video. If Q is one half, this is the case. And here, this is two Q minus one. So I send minus one to the other side, minus two Q to this side. So four Q greater than two, hence Q greater than one half. So if Q is greater than one half, this holds. Therefore, this is holding if Q is less than one half. So if the opposite of this inequality, well, then the opposite of this inequality. So if Q is greater than one half, P equals one is the optimal best response. Uh, if Q is less than one half, P equals zero is the optimal or the best response. Otherwise, any P is a best response. Good. So what do I do? I'm going to draw the best response function. Okay. So I have here P and Q. These are the strategies. Uh, the P is some number between 0 and 1. Q is some number between 0 and 1. So therefore, the strategies of these players are going to be somewhere in this square, although it looks like a rectangle. Sorry. So it's a square, one by one. Well, here I'm going to draw this step function. All right. So drawing a step function is usually more complicated. So give yourself some time to figure out how to draw this. So when Q, so Q equals one half is a threshold, as you see. So Q equals one half, the midpoint, is a threshold. Okay. So when Q is exactly equal to one half, any P between zero and one is the best response. All right. So therefore, um, so any P so given that Q is one half, all right, oops, I don't know why, okay. So any P is a best response, all right, so it's, it's this horizontal line. When Q is greater than one half, so Q is in this range, greater than one half, the P has to take value one, all right? So therefore, this is P equals one, okay? So when, for example, Q equals 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, for all those, the optimal P, the regret-free P, is equal to 1, all right? And when Q is less than 1 half in this region, the optimal P is 0. So P is 0, so therefore this. So you see that step function? So this is the first part, and then this is the second part, the horizontal, and then the vertical line, this. So this is, we call it BR1, the best response function for player one. BR1, the best response function for player one. Okay, so that's how we calculate the best response for player one.
But exactly the same way, I'm going to calculate the best response for player two. So for player two, what Q values given P will be optimal or regret free? All right. Well, obviously, the expected payoffs here now depends on of the second player depends on P. OK. So. Here's what I have. Uh, 1 minus 2p is sometimes greater than 2p minus 1. Sometimes it's going to be less than 2p minus 1. Sometimes they're going to be the same. If they're the same, all right, which we know, we already solved p equals 1 half. Well, that means the expected payoff of playing left and right the same. So whether you play left or right makes no difference because both will bring you the same expected payoff or same payoff in expectation. So if you need to play one of those strategies, you can say, I'm going to play left, I'm going to play right, uh, or I'm going to play anything like 50-50, 60-40, 80-20, or any combination. So that means any Q in between 0 1 is optimal. You're indifferent. And then if this is the case, so the playing left brings higher expected payoff than playing right. So that means you should play left for sure. Because if you play right with a tiny probability, you're going to regret. Actually, playing right with a positive probability means you're playing some suboptimal action with some positive probability. So instead of so if you have hundred dollars to you know invest on left arm or right arm on this. Uh, a, a slot machine, well, you would like to put all your money into the most profitable arm, which is left. So therefore, you should play left, which means Q must be equal to 1. I mean, you should choose Q equals 1. And symmetrically, here you should choose Q equals 0, because playing right is more profitable than playing left. Oh, okay, there's a, there's a typo here, 1 minus 2p. Oh, no, there's a typo. So t, 2p minus 1 is playing right, is more profitable than playing left. Good. The question is, uh, for what values of p those inequalities will hold? So here, this is 4p less than 2, which means p is less than 1 half. And therefore, this is p is greater than 1 half. And this is when p is equal to 1 half. So I'm going to use a different color. Now this is the best response for player 2. And p equals 1 half is the threshold. So p equals 1 half is the midpoint between 0 and 1. So when p is equal to 1 half, any q is a best response. OK? So I basically draw this vertical line because any q is a best response. When p is... Uh, less than one half in this region, the Q must be equal, take the value one. All right, so it should take the value one. And when P is greater than one half, the Q must be equal to zero, right? Q equals zero here. So for all those values of P, the Q must be zero. So therefore, I have this step function, this blue step function, which is BR2, the best response of the second player. All right. Well, these are two curves and they intersect at one and only one point, which is this point. And as you see, this point corresponds to P equals one half, Q equals one half, which is the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. In fact, it is the only Nash equilibrium of this game. Well, the next important question is that why this point of intersection is the Nash equilibrium. Well, in economics, the point of intersection plays a very important role, right? The supply demand intersects the best responses. So the, whenever the best responses intersect, I remember I talked about this when I talked about the Cournot equilibrium. Uh, so the same thing, whenever the best response functions intersect, it means at that point, no player will regret because given that this outcome is realized, it's like they observe that this is the outcome, both players will say, oh, you know what? I don't regret because I did the best I could do. That's why. So remember, the P and the Q can be and our strategies and they can be anything between 0 and 1. So therefore, any point on this square is a potential 
equilibrium or outcome. I'm sorry, not equilibrium, outcome. So for example, this is one potential outcome, right? Q equals one and P equals zero. However, this outcome, so player one writes P equals zero, player two writes Q equals one. And if this outcome is re revealed to the players, somebody will regret. Well, who is that? Well, this point is on the best response function of player two. So that means given that player one is playing P equals zero, player two by choosing Q equals one, he is actually best responding. I mean, he's playing something that he's not gonna regret. However, this point is not on the best response function of player one, which means player one is gonna regret of his choice by playing P equals zero. Why? Well, Q equals one means, Q equals one means the second guy is choosing left for sure. So if you as player one learn that player two played left, what would be your regret-free strategy? It would be left, right? It's like playing left and getting plus one, meaning you would have chosen P equals one rather than P equals zero. But here you're playing P equals zero. So you're gonna regret that because you're getting minus one. All right, so if we choose any other point, for example, this point, whatever that corresponds to, for example, P equals one over four and Q equals three over four. I just made up the numbers, any number here. Well, it's neither on the best response function of player one, nor on the best response function of player two, which means given that player one observes that player two has chosen three over four, player one is gonna regret of playing one over four because his regret-free outcome for this Q was P equals one. And symmetrically, because P equals one four is what player two observes, he's gonna regret because his regret-free outcome was on this blue curve, which is Q equals one. So both players would regret. Hence, it's not Nash. So any point on this square, other than this intersection point, there's gonna be someone who's regretting, all right? So this point is regret-free because it's on the best response function of both players, all right? So given that I learn your strategy, P, the Q I choose is already the optimal, and given for the other player, given that I now observe your Q, the chosen P, one half, is optimal. So I'm not gonna regret, you're not gonna regret, so it's regret-free outcome. Hence, the drawing the best response functions are important because once you draw the best response functions, you draw them at the point of intersection will always give the Nash equilibrium, okay? All right, so that was a very long explanation. I'm gonna solve another example um, in the next video.